Welcome to this short executive knowledge lecture on topic two, paper eight of the SFC licensing exams. This topic covers the Stock Exchange of Hong Kong primary and secondary markets. And as you can see uh, on the screen, uh, we're going to look at the primary market, the secondary market, uh, and then three other areas with regard to the markets in Hong Kong. Uh, I will em emphasize the important points to help you understand the core material you need to know to sit the exam and a copy of the study notes that you see on the screen can be downloaded from the Executive Knowledge website, Paper 8 Resources. As ever, I strongly recommend that you supplement this learning with question practice uh, by attempting the practice questions that have been uploaded to Examinator Dot online. If you go to examinator.online, uh, go to paper eight, and you will see well over 250 practice questions. Okay, so we start off page two, uh, considering the primary market. What is the primary market? Well, that is really for listings. Uh, so the primary market is the investors that want to buy new issues for the first time. We're asked, why do companies go public and uh, that's a, a sort of a shorthand for listing the company uh, and as it says there to uh, gain access to capital to get capital often for expansion uh, and that's the point that is uh, in the second bullet point but also it raises company profile uh, and spreads risk across many owners as opposed to maybe the founders if it was originally a startup company now, the advantages and disadvantages of listing are well worth being aware of because they often get examined. Advantages of listing a company, the access to capital markets for future expansion that we've already referred to. It provides sharing of risks, allows the owners, the original owners and entrepreneurs to liquidate their interests, way of getting out, getting some cash, monetizing all that hard work. Promotes the name of the company, an element of PR and the products, and also provides an objective market valuation because the markets close every day with closing price. Whereas if you are just a private company, uh, an objective market valuation is not readily at hand. Disadvantages of being listed, well, loss of control by the original owners, founders, uh, you are subjected to public scrutiny and some entrepreneurs have not liked that. Richard Branson is a case in point and has uh, taken his uh, company private. Administrative costs, including uh, compliance costs, market communication costs, uh, these costs you just don't have when you're private. Uh, greater scrutiny of what you are doing uh, by authorities, shareholders, analysts, etc. Uh, and external factors, market forces, uh, influence company value, which may not be in your control. Uh, a major virus, for example, can bring uh, your company value down, uh, which is, as I say, out with your control. Okay, be aware of the advantages and disadvantages of listing company could well be a question in there. Okay, different types of markets in Hong Kong. We have two. We have the main board and GEM, which originally was growth enterprise market. The main board for listing is for large established uh, companies which have uh, particular profit requirements uh, and listing requirements. And we're going to be looking at those. Interesting point at the bottom of page two is that uh, since April 2018, biotech companies at the pre-profit, pre-revenue stage, it's a very polite way of saying that they're not making any money, uh, are still permitted to list on the main board. And, and they have been uh, quite popular uh, as they have significant upside if they have any biotech breakthroughs. Uh, there is the outline of the GEM uh, offers small and mid-sized companies with growth aspirations means of raising capital. And there are a few other points there. Okay, so when we are listing, often it will be an initial public offering. You have not offered shares uh, to the market before. Now, when you go through an IPO, you must comply with the listing rules uh, and the uh, 
reasons that we have the listing rules are listed there under 1.6. Now, it is the stock exchange that administers listings. It is not the SFC. Uh, and uh, the, the, the stock exchange intends that uh, it will carry out its function of providing a fair, orderly, efficient market for the trading of securities. Now, I'm highlighting that point because we've seen that as an answer in a question. Also, be aware of what the listing rules are there to ensure another list that can attract a question. Now, we have many, many different types of listing. Uh, and there they are, starting with offer for subscription. Now, with an offer for subscription, it is new shares offered to the public. Whereas top of page four, uh, offer for sale, that is existing shares that are already an issue and are being offered to the public. So that the offer for sale is very attractive to the founding entrepreneur of a company uh, because he or she can offer their own shares and immediately monetize their interest. There's a placing where you place shares with pre-arranged parties, often an investment bank is involved. Introduction, uh, the, the, the notes are there, have a look at it, not that common where you have maybe a, a subsidiary being carved out of a holding company. It's not so much new shares being listed as shares being introduced to existing shareholders. Then we have a rights issue. Now, a rights issue is where we issue shares to existing shareholders in proportion to their currently held shares, the number of shares they have. And we'll be considering rights issues uh, in the next section uh, where we look at secondary markets. Open offer, similar to rights issue in that it's an offer to existing shareholders, uh, but there's there's no limit. You're not limited to your uh, own proportion of the company that you hold. Capitalization issue, also known as a bonus issue, and that's where you are capitalizing retained profits. No money is collected with capitalization issue. Consideration issue, issuing shares to acquire uh, usually a company, a takeover or merger. Exchanger substitution, uh, not, not regularly looked at, so I'll have a look at the two points. Hong Kong depository receipt, that is where usually overseas companies, instead of listing, they place their shares with a bank, uh, the depository, and the receipts are then listed. Okay, moving on to the role of advisors and professionals with a listing. Now, a major entity in this process is the sponsor. Now, the sponsor uh, is the entity that will help the issuer, the company that wants to be listed, helps them with the listing process, in, in effect, introduces them to the stock exchange and helps them with the process the meetings, etc. Underwriter, top of page six, usually we associate underwriter uh, with guaranteeing buying the shares if they do not fly uh, at an initial listing. But there's a little bit more to it than that. And I want to highlight it because we've seen questions covering this. It's an intermediary between the issuer and the investing public, usually investment bank or brokerage house. Prime Primary responsibility, organize the issue of the security. So this is the actual marketing and distribution. Often organize syndicate to help with the sale, promotion, distribution. And the point that I referred to earlier can also share the risk by agreeing, you have to enter into an agreement to buy all unsold securities or buy all securities and then resell them. Sponsor is liaising with the stock exchange, underwriter is liaising with the market. The accountant will deal with accounting reports, legal advisors with the legal structure, valuers, the valuation of underlying assets or subsidiaries or other companies. Depository I've already referred to. Share registrar uh, is an important party in that they sit between the uh, shareholders and the company. So it says there are share issues uh, Shares issued by Hong Kong must be registered via approved registrar, share registrars, uh, and such a registrar must be a member of the Federation 
of share registrars and all registrars must comply with the code of conduct for share registrars. So it would be a uh, company, often the corporate services business, uh, that will offer share registration services to the shareholders and they are employed by the listed company. 1.9, Hong Kong Exchange hearing, well, you, you, your case will be heard when you list, uh, your case will be heard by the listing committee. Uh, there's up to 28 of these individuals, not all of them meet at the same time. Uh, they will go through your listing application and uh, will hear your case. When the committee is happy, satisfied, a uh, company can start advertising and marketing campaign to uh, attract the investors. Now, part of the marketing campaign is 1.10, the roadshow, and that is promotion of the shares to prospective investors. Uh, as it says there, the company and its advisors will have a number of meetings, presentation with potential investors. They're building the book. They're uh, establishing the interest. Uh, and as it says, third bullet point under 1.10, it also allows company and its advisors to assess likely demand from investors for the shares. Now, prospectus conventions, the prospectus, the listing document that you are going to put out there uh, for potential shareholders to review and decide whether or not they are going to invest. And we outline the contents, uh, the fact that it's the directors who are responsible for what appears in the prospectus. Uh, outlines the fact that if there are subsequent events to the issue of the prospectus, then that has to be uh, published. Uh, language, prospectus, English and Chinese, not English or Chinese, as we uh, have seen with internal documents. Illustrations, you can have illustrations as long as they're not misleading, graphs, etc. Profit forecasts, seen this come up. If future profits and dividends are referred to in the prospectus, they haven't occurred yet, obviously, they must be supported by a formal profit forecast. Any forecast must be supported by underlying assumptions and the reporting accountants and the financial advisors must state that they're all satisfied that the profit forecast has been made after due and careful inquiry. All assumptions made should be specific, not general, and should help investors form a view on the reliability of the forecast. A favorite, that area, that paragraph, uh, for example. Not every exam, but there's just so much detail in it that often is extracted with questions. There is a disclaimer there um, in the prospectus, and that is that Hong Kong Exchange is in Clearing Limited, that is the exchange controller and the stock exchange, they disclaim any responsibility for the contents of the prospectus, which is not really that surprising. With regard to debt securities, page eight, uh, conventions for content, uh, responsibility, etc., etc., same as those for equity, uh, and listing documents required for all kinds of offer to Hong Kong retail, including those four methods. Moving along to 1.12, prospectus preparation. This section looks at all the requirements that must be uh, addressed for a prospectus, for equity securities, and for debt securities. Uh, fourth main bullet point right at the bottom of 1.12. Although a prospectus must be in printed form, it can also be made available in electronic form. Uh, any electronic prospectus must contain confirmation that's identical to the printed form, another easy point to examine. And then last uh, under primary uh, market, 1.13, the EIPO has been examined and we're told that under the electronic initial public offering IPO services provided by the stock exchange, Hong Kong investors can apply for shares electronically. And some share registrars, remember that's the entities in between the company and the shareholders, uh, they also provide the IP, EIPO services for public subscription. 